2023 is the year of the gamer, and today we're taking a look at one of the thickest boys of all time. Welcome back to the show, it's Gay for May. Gamer Edition Optimus Prime is among the first in a new subline of Studio Series figures based on the fan favorite War for Cybertron video game. A game that's over 10 years old, you can't buy it anymore, and the studio's dead. Why did they release this now? Optimus's alternate mode is a big, can't relate, thick, can't relate, truck-like vehicle. And when I say big, I mean big. He's very wide and bulky, closer in size to a leader class vehicle than a Voyager in my opinion. He just barely fits in my hand and I'm pretty sure I don't have small mm -hmm. hands. Even as an alien vehicle, it's unmistakably Optimus Prime. Having the oh so familiar red and blue color arrangement and other truckish details like the smokestacks and grill, but thanks to the aggressive curvature of the front end, as well as these huge tires and the overall bullet shape, it's a much more ferocious looking beast than the classic Freightliner and was definitely built for speed. This thing can outrun Decepticons faster than Ezra Miller outruns personal accountability. Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Please see DC's The Flash, only in theaters this summer. Most of the paint on him has been dedicated to the silver accenting on the front end and on each wheel, including a thin red striping around the rim to replicate the glowing effects seen in the game. There's also a splash of red paint on these panels to continue the design from the front. Under certain lighting, it almost matches the plastic perfectly, but there's a bit of a sparkle to it that gives it away. Some of the finer applications of the paint are a bit messy, and the silver looks noticeably thin in certain spots on mine. The vehicle mode holds together really well, though. Though. The panels and connections are expertly machined to a precise fit, which makes this truck feel solid, but it's hard not to notice the open gaps all over the chassis. If you flip the truck over, you can actually see all the way through the vehicle, but that's not even the worst of it. Infamously, at the rear, we'll find Optimus's fists, balled up and exposed like a shameless old man in the boys' locker room at the Y. If I say, no, I'm not attracted to boys, that's not the truth. Pragmatically, there are very few people who display their Transformers in vehicle mode, and even fewer display them facing backwards, so you won't ever see this except while handling the toy. But this is the angle of the vehicle you would be most familiar with having played the game, and you would have expected them to adhere closer to the depiction in said game. But the front of the vehicle is a lot worse in my opinion. They try to replicate the cute thing the original figure did, where the real robot chest is a visible part of the front end, but they left these gaps along the edges and the chest doesn't line up with the design on the bonnet, so it looks like they completely screwed it up. Honestly, Honestly, I think the side view is the best view overall, which is my preferred way of displaying vehicle modes anyway. Optimus's transformation is fairly simple, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some really slick moves here, like how this central panel inverts to cover the hole in the leg, or how the fenders rotate and slide into the body, perfectly slotting into these cuts in the vehicle's roof. It really showcases some impeccable engineering, and is definitely one of the highlights of the toy in my opinion. In robot mode, Optimus is a platinum certified <laughs> While he is a bit shorter than other modern Optimus his figures, what he lacks in length, he makes up for in pure girth. Every facet of his body is enriched with metallic mass, which was a hallmark of the original War for Cybertron designs, maxing out the beef sliders in all the characters, and basically turning the Great War into a Mr. Olympia pageant. <laughs> As a result, the figure is a pretty good recreation of Optimus' appearance from the game, and the team went out of their way to directly refer to the in-game model when creating it. Notably, they did neglect these rather prominent collar pieces that Optimus has, slicing them in half seemingly so they wouldn't cover these pinholes. This does some negative things to his silhouette and makes it harder to ignore the deep crevice that descends into his body. In contrast to his big body, Optimus has this little tiny head with these long, veiny bunny ears. Those ears, along with the exact exaggerated head crest and the angular mask definitely give this face sculpt plenty of uniqueness among Optimus designs. The torso is where some of the best mecha meatiness is located though. His body is broad and thick like a power lifter. There are subsets of the fandom who argue that male transformers never get sexualized, and I want those people to take notice of Optimus's fat, luscious man milkers. They're so big, he can't actually see over them. Optimus could find himself sheathed in moist, quivering bumblebussy before he even realized anyone was bent over in front of him. Under this magnificent chest, you'll find his version of the Matrix of Leadership, resting atop some mechanical detailing. It can pop off, but Optimus can't hold it since this figure doesn't have articulated fingers. Makes you wonder why they bothered including it at all. At least the wrists rotate, and the arms are appropriately bulky with decent movement. He looks cool wielding his signature Energon axe, which can unfold from a single blade to a double blade for a little
little bit of choppy choppy PP action and has a handle long enough to grip with two hands as well, but it feels a little awkward, so I prefer using it one-handed. And I usually have Optimus wield his big poleaxe one-handed too, but the star of this figure has to be the Ion Cannon, because it can replace Optimus's arm just like in the video game. The right forearm can be removed to reveal a 5mm peg for the cannon to attach to. The downside is that this is the only way he or anyone else can use this gun, as it doesn't have a proper handle, but it does accept blast effect parts. Oh my god, Hazar, why are you so inconsistent with this? I think they mostly got the legs right too, especially how the wheels are reversed and how his big tube hangs out down there. But it's attached to this humongous piece of vehicle kibble with no detailing on it, and it would have been the ugliest part of this figure if it wasn't for these absolutely cavernous thigh gaps. They were the first thing I noticed when he was revealed, because Hasbro doesn't typically leave large empty gaps on Optimus Prime figures, at least not in such visible places. But you may have noticed he also has some incredibly deep gaps in his shoulders and upper arms too, which becomes much more obvious while posing him. I was a wimp before Anchor Arms! Now I'm a jerk and everybody loves me! So despite his visually large size, Hasbro has actually been pretty thrifty with the plastic here. This is impressive in its own right, much like how thrifty tooling allowed them to slip a brand new Cosmos into the Velocitron line, but Optimus runs into a lot of the same criticisms I had for Cosmos, having almost zero completely closed off parts with no detailing within to make up for it. These gaps are so ugly I am legitimately considering buying gap fillers for the first time in my collecting career. That said, I am still having a lot of fun with this figure, and it would be wrong to ignore how well designed he is. And when there's still enough room in the budget for two fairly large weapons, that really ups the play value for this figure. I'm excited to see more from this line, especially looking forward to the expanding arsenal of weapons, but with the reactions I've been seeing so far, we might be in for quite a bumpy ride. But anyway, that's just my opinions, please leave yours in the comments below, bye bye.